So we're looking at chapter three, lesson 3.6, which is communicating about graphs. And what this section is about is looking at graphs and seeing whether or not they adhere the communication checklist. So let's just review the communication checklist that we learned last year. Did you include all the important details and did you use the right type of graph, the correct type of graph for the data? Did you make reasonable conclusions, which means did you make any predictions or is there anything that you can infer about the information that you can make a statement about? Did you justify your conclusions? This is your proof. And were you convincing? Does the answer actually make sense? So in Kaylee's report, she looked at whether or not um, she needs an increase in her allowance. So she surveyed 10 of her classmates and reported the amounts of how much they spent. Then she used a spreadsheet and a graph to present her findings. And then she asked Karina to comment on it. So if we look at, she asked 10 people and they had a total allowance of $960. Uh, she, did, she never mentions the sample size in here at all. So I would also question what's the sample size because she only asked 10 students and from her class. So is that representative of all 13 year olds in the world? Perhaps she went to a more affluent or a rich school or her, her friends might all be very similar in terms of family dynamic. So we're asking, is the sample biased? So she used the spreadsheet program to create a table and then she created a pie chart using the spreadsheet program. The first thing is, did she include all the important details of a graph? Well, she chose a circle graph to show the spending and saving habits of 13 year olds because a circle graph shows how something is divided up. She knew that a line graph would not be appropriate because she's not showing any trends or any change over time period. She didn't want to use a bar graph or a histogram uh, or a pictograph, uh, but she doesn't state why. Now she finally has uh, the details. I gave my graph a title, labeled the sections for my graph. I can conclude that 13 year olds spend more than they save. Well, she can conclude that, but how do we know that? Where's her proof? So she makes a conclusion that people spend, that the kids spend more than they save, but there's actually no proof and there's no other conclusions. She never mentions at all. She never mentions at all that she needs an increase of her allowance based on this information. So she never actually answers the original question. So how I would fix this is that she would add in some proof to state why. She would say 86% of 13 year olds spend their money and only 14% save. And so she she wanted to increase her allowance so that she can save more or spend more. We don't really know actually what her argument is. If we look down at the second example, we have Rohan wants to find out how important music is to 13 year olds. He conducts a survey and presents his finding in a histogram. Based on his histogram, he concluded that music is very important to 13 year olds. So well, let's look at all of the different points of the communication checklist. Did he use the most appropriate graph? He used a histogram. And histogram in this case is the most appropriate because he's able to have intervals and find the frequency in each interval. Secondly, he also uh, does not want to use a circle graph because he didn't want to see how things are divided, nor did he use a line or a scatter plot to look for any trends. So a histogram or bar graph is, uh, is the most appropriate graph. His conclusion, his conclusion that his music is very important to 13 year olds. Well, what's his proof? Well, his proof is that most of the students listen between 20 and 40 hours a week. So he could have, he could use that in his conclusion. Also, was he convincing? Well, it would have been convincing if he had also done a comparison study with maybe 16 year olds or 20 year olds to see whether or not the importance of music or the hours spent listening to music is different for that type of group also. So this is chapter 3.6, communicating about graphs. Just to review, you need to talk about the type of graph, you need to make a responsible, reasonable conclusion, have proof, and be convincing with your arguments.